I'm Klaus, German, but married to a Spanish wife. Uh, three beautiful kids grown up in the meantime. We're living, by the way, uh, in a small town between Basel and Freiburg. Beautiful landscape, black forest and the wine yards there. And uh, sport, uh, health is super important for us. We're trying to practice as a family, uh, also as a couple of sports, basically every day. And another hobby is my, my vintage car, a Volvo Amazon 9066. It's wonderful to drive it there also in, in the area. So the so family, if I start with my own childhood, I was the, the youngest of four boys, which makes you in a certain way resilient all, already and you always try to strive and, and to push hard. So therefore, uh, and I've been very grateful to my, to my parents, by the way, I want to say this. So really had a big focus on, on being modest, humble, and focus on health and on good education. Um, so I, I spent a couple of years in the army to become an army officer and then I, I went into, into law, law school, because I thought that's a, a study which is very broad. You can define your um, career, your way afterwards. I wasn't quite sure what I should do. A little bit lost after the army, to be honest. And then I had a very relevant personal topic. One of my best friends uh, got cancer and this was the first big health topic. Uh, in my life, in my, uh, yeah, with my friends and with my family. And it also made me nearly sick because it affected me heavily. And I, then I, I thought, well, what, what are positions in life where you can have impact, uh, be close to people? The first choice uh, was to become a criminal defense lawyer because I thought we help people who are under attack, who need uh, people standing next to them in very difficult situation. After some years I thought, well, that's also not the way going forward because the impact is very limited and I also wanted to have a, a bigger impact and I went to corporate. And just reflecting that I'm here at the United Nations, some of my biggest moments in time was when I, representing back then my former company Siemens as the Chief Compliance Officer speaking to the General Assembly of the United Nations in New York after we set up our new compliance system in the company. So after 18 years at Siemens, I joined end of 2018 Novartis, one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world, as a member of the executive committee and the chief ethics, risk and compliance officer. So what is, is this? First of all, we are running the company, a company which reaches basically nearly 800 million patients with all the issues you have in research and development, manufacturing and distributing, granting access to patients. In the specific role of ethics, risk and compliance, we are trying to build trust. Uh, trust internally with our associates, trust externally with society, because our business is full of ethical dilemmas. Whatever we do, because we are so close to human health and life. So practical examples are, we created a new code of ethics where we did co-creation with associates inside the company, people outside the company, to make it meaningful in the local contest. Risk management sounds very theoretical. That's managing, for example, the COVID pandemic for the company and keeping global supply chains open for our 800 million patients around the world or managing to the best what we can the humanitarian crisis in the Ukraine, granting access to the patients we have in the Ukraine and of course also in Russia. And then compliance, the fight against corruption, really making sure that we have a safe, a good image and that we really maintain our processes. And the, day, the work is different every day. It's a lot about interaction with colleagues internally and a huge amount of stakeholders at the United Nations uh, today also externally to build really long-lasting trust with society. Yeah, first of all, I believe that there's a future. Uh, I believe that ethics, risk and compliance needs to stay on the forefront. I mean, we, we have a big societal debate, especially after the pandemic, about ethical um, dilemmas, issues. People are unhappy, there's social unrest. If you, if you see it from the positive side, there's a huge interest in ethics. And we, when we did our ethical um, uh, surveys in the company, 10,000s of people responded. So we, we see there's an appetite for an ethical debate. And I think we need to be very focused on future developments on the ethical side. And take, for example, artificial intelligence. The people are scared 
but I also want to use it. So what is for the companies, what is for the societies the right way going forward? I think our profession can add a perspective on it, on, on it. can add proposals as we had done last year with our, yeah, our proposal for a responsible use of artificial intelligence in our company. Then medicine is changing. Uh, not as going virtual. Telemedicine is maybe the future for society, which is from an access point of view, good, you can reach more people, but the ethics, risk and compliance models need to adapt. Social media in the interaction with our partners, the medical profession, the patient organizations, has a much bigger, bigger focus in the future, but also risks the misuse of social media. So I really believe that this function is needed in companies, this assurance piece and an ethics catalyst not as a, as a giver of solutions, but as part of the discussion, triggering societal debates for a good collaboration, especially between the private and public sector.